Hello, hello, everybody. My name is Chantel Francis, and I am giving you an update on Celebrity Big Brother. Um, we are at episode five. Now, I know that I did episode one and two, and then there's a little blank pause for three, four, and five. I was trying to keep up with the everyday podcast, but then it would go to the next day, and then I'm like, I would watch the show, and I'm like, okay, I'll do both of the podcasts after, and then I... I was like, oh, no, then there's another one tomorrow. Let me just do them all at the same time. And then I tried to do them all at the same time. I got really confused with what was would be spoilers for that particular podcast and what would not be. So I just decided to go and just catch myself up to date. And I have learned that I need to do my podcast right after the episode airs. Because with it happening so fast like this, there's no time for me to wait the next day because there's another show the next day and then I get to I follow spoilers and then it gets too confusing so I am sorry that I don't have any um updates for episode three four three two three, three and four but um I have episode five for you which was as they've all been a great episode uh, we start with Julie Miss Julie Chen throwing a little shade on Miss Omarosa by being hashtag but first <coughs> <coughs> So it seems to me as though maybe Julie Chen doesn't believe that Amorosa's uh, uh, asthma attack was as serious and legit maybe as Amorosa is pretending it to be. Um, like to be fair, my first instinct was that she was planning on walking off the show because they were all ganging up on her and like she does like to throw t temper tantrums and she does like to kind of, uh, you know, dangle like I'm going to leave the show um, in the producer's face. So, I mean, it wouldn't be surprised if Amorosa, you know, went to the diary room to pretend or to actually e self-evict. And I think that she was probably persuaded by the producers to stay. Um, rumor has that she's getting paid a hell of a lot of money. Um, I heard it was a million bucks to be on the show, plus another two hundred fifty thousand dollars if she wins. Like, and maybe she's getting more money every week that she's in there as a stipend. Like, it's a good paycheck for her. So, and she is bringing in everything that I want from a reality TV show villain. I thought I was not going to like her, but I am. I'm waiting. Like, I'm waiting for Amorosa to blow. It's like, it's like, you can see it bubbling. You can see it, it's about to happen. But she's just, you know, very quiet and very calm. And she always just has, like, the way that she thinks of, like, ways to get into your brain and, like, make you really insecure about something and then lays in her agenda. Like, she's, it's just amazing how to watch her work. And, uh, like, for some reason, I like her better in this Big Brother capacity than I did on, like, The Apprentice and if she was on any other uh, reality show. I can't remember. I feel like I've seen her more than just The Apprentice a couple times, but who knows? So, yeah, I think that Omarosa really wants to be in the game for the long haul. And um, when she came back in, she came with a new strategy, and I think it's going to work. So... Ari and Brandy in this episode to start conspiring to get Shannon out. And I know that Shannon was playing pretty hard in the beginning, like one of the first couple of competitions, like she flipped the house, et cetera, et cetera. But at this point, like Shannon is so, doesn't know what's going on in the game that she, I don't even think she's a, a threat right now. But Ari and Brandy really, really, really want her out. And, like, they're pushing this agenda and they're not head of household. I'm just like, it's just so classic that people that don't have the power think, know what the best move is, and they're always pushing the person in power to make the best move. But this move wouldn't be the best move for Ross. Zero percent chance. So when, like, the whole decision, though, with, like, going back and forth between whether or not they're going to flip the house vote, I was like... I think Shannon might be done, and she has absolutely, absolutely no idea. So Ross, he, if he does want to flip the house, which it seems like he's like leaning towards, like him and Marissa are having a little conversation in the head of household bedroom. And, you know, I'm kind of like bummed because like, 
I think that Shannon really believes that Marissa and her like have like a solid like undercover alliance. And it looks as though Marissa is willing to get rid of Shannon in like a heartbeat. And I, what I don't understand about all these people really wanting to get Shannon out is like, she's such a good meat shield. Like she it takes the heat off of everybody and she wins competitions. So wouldn't you rather someone that wins competitions be on your side and be fighting with you or for you? Uh, right now, anyways. Like, they've only had one person out of the house so far. So there's still quite a bit of game. Maybe not a lot of time, but there's still quite a bit of game to be had still. So it's just really kind of frustrating that, like, they're already ready to to flip, get rid of her and stick with the floaters that always make it to the end and they always end up being the final two. Like, watch Brandy and Ariadna are going to be the final two because they're, I mean, they're strategizing a little bit, but they don't have any power. So... Like, who cares about their strategies? Like, it, it doesn't matter, you know? Like, everybody has talks big game when, it's, when their game isn't on the line, of course. And so, next happened, um, like, Mark is, like, kind of complaining about Amorosa talking about the White House. And I'm like, this is what a CBS is paid for. So, they want this White House dirt. And B, like how Omarosa delivers it is so captivating. Whether it is lies, whether it is fabrications, whether it's, you know, half truths, I don't even care. It is like White House Gossip Magazine, and it's like amazing. I, I, I don't even love politics, and like I love hearing everything that she has to say about. Donald Trump and the White House like it's amazing and like the fact that Mark is like oh here on Rosa goes again talking about the White House like a you have no television in there b it's still your country so I would find it really interesting especially if none of you guys in the house voted for Trump other than Amorosa I think it should be something that I would find interesting if I was in the house as if I were American I think it'd be amazing but uh, I love how Ross is like, oh, but breaking news should come across the street. And like, it would just, oh, it would be just amazing if we could hear more. I'd love to hear more. Um, from people that I know that have watched the, watched the feeds, they say that she doesn't really talk about it that much. So maybe Mark was just having something to say or having an opinion in the diary room. Who knows? Who cares? Um, so I do like how Ross kind of proposed, though, the backdoor plan to Mark. He was kind of like, you know, so what if somebody uses the veto and da 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 Like, what, hap what if, like, who should I put up? And kind of, like, kind of made it seem as though Mark was kind of feeling out the possibility of this plan without it being something that Ross has really, really uh, already thought about. So I thought it was quite good. <laughs> but Mark's happy about it, of course, because he's not going to have any blood on his hands. Shannon definitely is going to be a fierce competitor. The only person that really loses out in, in, in getting Shannon out is, is Ross. And, like, what I don't understand about him making this decision or, like, or even thinking about it is, like, they leave the house and there's no sequester. So they're going to be watch Shannon's going to be watching all the, the footage. Like, she's a part of the game. So she – and she's a gamer. So I think that she'll watch live feeds. I think she will watch – all the episodes like I think she'll be really informed as a juror if especially if you blindsight her like that and I don't think she's gonna get, you're gonna get her vote and if that's the case you probably won't also get James's vote so it's potentially two votes that you wouldn't get just for making this big move that doesn't really even serve you that well because you're the next on the chopping block with like having any sort of strategic chops so I don't know why he hasn't thought about this yet but who knows what happens when you get into the big brother house you might just lose your sanity um, I, I wasn't really plussed about the next little segment about like Meta in the hot tub having like a combo with the, the, the video camera. Like I get it. There's someone that's like watching the video cameras and like, you know, they're interacting with Meta, but like it was a pretty long segment with like a flamingo fight and a camera on like a show that's only, you know, 43 minutes without commercials. I mean, I, maybe they want to give meta airtime i guess but like i would rather watch almost anything else like any anything else i'd rather watch anything else on the big brother like any diary room sessions like i would i'll watch them play two truths and a lie like i don't care i'll watch them do anything other than seeing meta have 
a flamingo fight in the hot tub while interacting with a camera. Like, please, please don't do that anymore. Please. Um, so I'm happy that Ross feels a little bit bad about Shannon. Like he's saying like, oh, she's probably playing for like all of her animal charities and like, you know, these animals are going to go, you know, without. And so I'm, I'm happy that he's at least having a bit of a, a change of heart because Shannon was never really gunning for any of them. And she was, as far as I could tell, was really loyal to all these people that are turning on her and like, are like watching her eat cereal and then saying like, oh, look how sneaky she's being. Like, she's really not doing anything right now. And before when she was winning, it was like, they were all together and it was like good for the team. So I'm happy that he's at least seeing that she has like a heart and like he's having a heart about the situation. So the veto is Shannon, Ross, Omarosa, Marissa, Ariadna, and Keisha. And I am praying that Shannon wins. Nothing I like more is like having the plan that is like going down to be foiled by like the person that's not even in the know. Whether they're in the know or not, like I would just would have loved if Shannon just, if she wins this, and so then we were able to, she just able to screw up their plans. Like, and she's good at competition. So I'm like, my fingers are crossed for Shannon. Like, I was like hoping, 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 hoping. So then Shannon messes up the question and it was easy. Like I was trying to play by my play as well at the same time. I'm counting everything, counting everything. And I knew the answer and I'm like, yes, yeah, she's going to know the answer. And then she answers incorrectly. And I was like, Shannon, it wasn't meant to be. Your days are done. The house has turned on you. You are being backdoored. That's, and I was like, it was decided like in my head, I was like, it is done. So at that point, I just assumed that everybody was going to throw the competition to either Keisha or, or Amorosa. That's what I just assumed was going to happen. And so a couple other people go up, they get, they get eliminated. And at the end, it's Marissa and Amorosa. And Amorosa doesn't even press the button. She allows Marissa to win. And then... Arissa gets the question what, right and wins the power of veto. And I'm like, well, if they want this backdoor plan to go without like, like without a hitch, like just allow Omarosa to use the veto on herself, then they have to do, uh, you know, a, like a replacement nominee. Shannon, like we got you, girl. Put her up on the block. She can't save herself anymore. The veto's done. And then it's like, oh, you should have won that veto. And that's, the, that's that. But no, things are completely different than I thought. And there's like this big kerfuffle that was happening when Marissa wins the veto. Like it's right before they're taking him out to commercial before when they're giving a moment to decide how to use the power of veto. And they're talking to, to Keisha. So I thought because Keisha and Marissa kind of were already talking about maybe working together and Marissa was kind of campaigning for Keisha to stay over Omarosa. So I thought that the argument was, hey, if I take you off the block right now, do you promise to work with us going forward? I thought that that's what the deal was that was being made. Like a hundred percent. I was like, that's the only thing that makes sense to me what's being like the deal. Commercial comes back. And Marissa stands up and she decided, decides not to use the power of veto. I'm like, what? Like, huh? So you guys have been talking for the last few days about this backdoor plan for Shannon. You had every opportunity to put it through. Now, if she hears about it and you didn't do it, like your game is on the line for sure if she decides to come after you. And like you kind of put this negativity in the air for absolutely no reason then she decides not to use the power of veto like i think it makes zero sense but i'm like okay that's great because i don't really want shannon to go and then i'm like oh but does that mean that they're gonna save keisha i'm like oh i'd rather amorosa stay over keisha sorry rudy but you're not really bringing anything for me to this game and then Keisha stands up and makes her plea that she's running out of breast milk. And maybe because of the stressful situation, she's not producing as much breast milk as possible. But to me, this was a quit. 
She quit, 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 quit. She couldn't hack it. She didn't like the fact that like she'd be maybe pleading for her life, that she doesn't know what they were going to do. She didn't really want to make any deals. Like she didn't want to go up against Omarosa. And I actually think that Omarosa convinced Keisha that it would be better for Omarosa to stay. And so Keisha's head was never really in the game anyways, in my opinion. So it was easy for Keisha to come up with this, like, well, my baby, because she did mention even in her, her package in the beginning, like in the first episode about like, she would leave for her baby in a second. So maybe she made enough money, she stayed it long enough, and now she can like go back to her child and allow um, Omarosa to potentially stay in the game because she was most likely going to be um, evicted if Keisha didn't self-evict, basically. But I love Mama Rose's little speech after Keisha makes her plea. She's like, something to the effect of God is the author of my fate. It's like, no man is your friend. No man is your foe. No man is your teacher. And you all have taught me so much. And make the best decision for Keisha. And like, I heard the audience was also laughing too. I'm like, you think that she's just be like, you know, and make the, the best decision for your game or like just make the, make the best decision for Keisha. <laughs> Omarosa, you are a delight. Um, so uh, when we were, everybody's doing the voting, I was like wondering, I'm like, do you think Meta is going to figure it out? Like, he needs to just calm down and come into the diary room, sit down, relax, w- wait for Julie to ask him the question. Like, he's just so... Like, he doesn't get it. I mean, I guess he has never seen the show, so he doesn't really get it. But he did vote correctly this time. So, congratulations. Um, and on Keisha's leaving the show, because in the end, she... What was the score? The vote was... I don't remember. Was it 8, eight to 0, I think? Nine to zero, eight to zero, nine, eight to zero, I think. No, seven to zero, something like that. Um, Nakisha was evicted from the Big Brother Celebrity Edition house. And she asked them not to kill each other. But then at the same time, she's like throwing shade to Shannon, to James, being like, Shannon was the one that wanted you out. And like, I was just following out. Well, actually, we both decided. Like, I didn't even understand what was the reason for her to say this. I thought it was pretty petty. I thought it was pretty shady. Like, she doesn't need to save her own game because she's, she's done. She's out of the house. She's, no votes come to her. Again, her how, the house guest's opinion of, of Rudy, I can't always want to call her that, doesn't actually matter. So I was just kind of like, that's pretty shady. And to throw Shannon on the bus like that. And then James also, like, Shannon was the only person that was, like, told James that they were, she was trying to save him that week. So, and then they did. And then they made a grand final four deal. So like Keisha's, you know, whatever that was, was useless. So I was kind of like, okay, bye. Like, I didn't really want you there anyways. I wish that the factor plan went into play just because like it would have been really entertaining to see how that went down. Um, so her making this plea kind of ruined the whole, you know, momentum of the game. I wanted to see how that played out, but I didn't want her to go anyways. If they're both going to stay on the block, I wanted Keisha to out of there. So in that sense, I got my wish and Shannon's still in the house. So oh, I just hope that Shannon gets told by, say, Mark tells James about the fact that there was a backdoor plan against Shannon. James tells Shannon and Shannon decides to work with Omarosa. And so the foursome could be Omarosa, James, Mark. And maybe Shannon can pull back in Mr. Ross Matthews. Maybe because they kind of need to keep the strong. Oh, they have meta. That would be, they could have the numbers actually. Um, but if she could just pull back in Ross, so then they can even have more of a power majority because they're going to always go after the strong people, the people that win competitions, the people that are strategic, and leave all the darn floaters till the end. That's just how it works. And Ross needs to remember that. So he's like, he's up next. Like after Shannon and Omarosa and James, it's going to be Ross Matthews. So we'll see what happens. So that was my update on episode five of Celebrity Big Brother US. 
I just to remind her, I love this season. I think it's amazing. Um, I can't get enough of it. And I will be back with you on, I guess, Wednesday evening after episode six, when we find out who won head of house household. I actually know already. Um, and who they nominate for eviction. So I hope you have a great rest of your day. My name is Chantal Francis. You can check out my Instagram at ShanFranFran or at Misty underscore Arrow. Or what else I got? Um, Reality Realness is like what this whole umbrella that this channel is under. So at Reality Realness with three S's. Um, or you can just subscribe to this channel and you can find out what me and Mike are talking about on RuPaul's Drag Race. I think that I'm also going to cover the Bachelor's Winter Olympic Games, whatever it's called. Um, so yeah, so there's going to be lots more coming, lots of content every day. So subscribe. There should be a button over here. Here. <laughs>